American journalist Evan Gersovich marks one year in Russian detention today. And joining me now is Edward Lucas, columnist for The Times and security specialist. Edward, thank you very much for joining us. It's a horrible anniversary that we're marking here on Talk TV, and that's why I and so many of my panellists are, um, are wearing this badge and our lapel stain. We stand for Evan. It's a year since he was detained. Can you tell us a little bit about this case for our viewers and listeners at home who may not have uh, kept up to date with it? Well, Evan Gershwitz is a Wall Street Journal journalist, a fluent Russian speaker uh, who was doing his job in Russia, reporting on the Russian side of the Ukraine uh, war and Kremlin politics and other things, and just doing his job. His crime really was committing journalism, and he's been in effect kidnapped by the Russian state. He's um, been in jail ever since. He's uh, accused of espionage, um, although there's no real evidence of this. And what he really is, is a hostage, um, a hostage um, on the Russian side, um, whom they're hoping to use to get back uh, someone who's jailed in the West for a real crime. And, and it sounds like there may be um, hope of him being released as part of a wider deal. Have we heard anything from the Russian government that encourages that Evan will be released uh, anytime soon? Well, the difficulty is that there are several Americans in jail in Russia on trumped up charges. Uh, there's, and we in the West do not go around arresting Russian journalists or business people or tourists or whoever in order to um, have chips on our side of the table. So there's really only one person in the West who the Russians want out, and that is a hitman, a Russian uh, military intelligence officer who was in jail in Germany for um, assassinating a um, exiled Georgian who was a big Kremlin critic who the Russians regarded as a terrorist. And this guy, Krasikov, um, shot this um, Russian, really, Ru Russian target um, within a stone's throw of the Bundestag in central Berlin. He botched his escape, he was caught, he's in jail. And the Russians would like him back, um, but they've not just got Gershkovitz in prison, Evan, my um, journalistic colleague. They've also got a, an American retired Marine called Whelan. They've got also um, Vladimir Karamurza, a friend of mine who is a Russian um, opposition politician, but also a British passport holder. So they've got uh, a lot of, as it were, our people in jail. and We've only got one of, as it were, their people over here. And so it's a rather unequal negotiation. And Edward, I, <clears throat> I know you yourself has, have worked in Moscow in your long journalistic career. It's a sort of Russia has become a kind of, I mean, it claims to be democratic. I, I can't go to Russia, I'm sanctioned, so I'm not allowed in the country anyway. It's a sort of gangster state, isn't it, behaving like this? How much danger are journalists like yourself who worked in Moscow in when they go to Russia to simply do their job like Evan uh, was doing when he was arrested? Well, I covered Russia in the 1990s and the early noughties, and even then it was a kind of gangster state, and one was occasionally worried that one might get caught in the crossfire um, in some sort of shootout, sort of Soprano-style shootout between different gangs, but it, it, you never really felt that you were going to be targeted as a Western journalist, because um, every side in the uh, sort of internal Russian dogfight was quite keen to get its point across to the Western media. So we were kind of useful uh, channels of communication where they you know, try and get a bit of better PR in the West or even dish the dirt on their rivals. But under the sort of latest incarnation of the mafia state under Putin, uh, there's a very strong anti-Westernism. West is seen as the, as the great enemy that's trying to encircle and undermine Russia. And Western journalists are regarded as part of that. So it's now extremely dangerous. And there are a handful of Western journalists who occasionally go in and out of Russia. The BBC, Steve Rosenberg, is perhaps one of the, the best known. But on the whole, now it's too dangerous to go there because asking the sort of questions that one wants to ask as a journalist, like what is military morale like? How is Russia making um, its artillery 
shells are, what are their relations with North Korea and China, all the sort of questions one wants to ask about a country that's at war, um, could easily be um, depicted or misunderstood as espionage. Yeah. And so it's really very difficult. I mean, Russia's basically said it's a criminal offence to undermine confidence in the armed forces. And that's really um, means that normal journalism is pretty much impossible. And Ed, Edward, that's fascinating because that idea of you know, asking completely reasonable questions, that because they have detained completely incorrectly and falsely Evan Gersovich on espionage charges, charges of him spying. Um, finally, what impact is the US of A having uh, in terms of trying to have him released? Are, are they making progress? It's very complicated, as you say, the, the, the bargaining chip, as Russia would see it, that sits in Western hands is in Germany. Is America making progress for his release? Well, to some extent, and there was a very long and, and deeply researched article in the Wall Street Journal about these, what I would call hostage negotiations between Russia and the West, and the idea that the Americans might ask the Germans to let this assassin free in exchange then for getting some Americans out of prison in Russia. But there's a big difference on our side. Not only do we not go around collecting hostages in order to trade them, we're also vulnerable to celebrity pressure. And so there was an American basketball player um, who was caught with a tiny amount of, um, of, of cannabis oil, um, which was there for completely re legitimate medical reasons. And this produced an sort of entire um, scrum of pressure from Hollywood, and quite recently she was a you know, well-known American celebrity and people were, were keen, to, keen to support her. But that sort of distorted things on the, um, on, on the Western side. And in Russia, Putin is not under any sort of public pressure to get anybody particular either. So he can play this in terms of cold calculating rationality, whereas we have, you know, in every Western country, we're free countries, yeah. we have the media, we have the ability to campaign, and people will say, hey, you know, my cousin, my son, my brother, my friend, whoever is in jail in Russia, do something. And we put pressure on our politicians to do that. Of course, that does weaken our negotiating position if we're trying to get them we're sitting across the table from someone like Vladimir Putin. Edward, thank you so much. Fascinating. And people have been able to... Thank you for joining us. People who have been watching can see that photograph of people here at News UK gathered in the lobby. And it's really, really important that we keep the issue of Evan Gersovich's illegal detention in the front and centre of everyone's minds. Because, frankly, any state that is in the business of electing or of, of, um, of arresting journalists who are there keeping us and people around the world informed of the actions of that state is a rogue state. This is an illegal detention, and we must ensure that Evan, one year on from his detention, is released.